Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Removing My Loving Self question and answer presentation, Jesus answers general questions from the entire Removing My Loving Self session about removing the techniques used to maintain facade and addictions associated with our unloving selves. Recorded on the 8th of June 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, so now we're off of that topic. <laughs> and we're on to, basically we're just on to general questions about the whole thing. Is that, is that where we're at? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'll just write that up on the board just <laughs> so we know where we're at. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm comfortable. <laughs> All my fear has been allayed. <laughs> okay. Far away. Um so with the denial technique, say, of justification, mm -hmm. I know that while I'm justifying in the process, I can stop myself because I recognise I'm rambling mm -hmm. and I have an opportunity to feel. Mm -hmm. But with judgment, which is, a, again, a denial technique, yes. I, is it a... It's a much more powerful denial technique. Right. Mm -hmm. And to just stop it, is that willpower or a loving use of will just to Well, stop if it? you just try to stop it with your, you can do it with both, can't you? You can stop it with your willpower and just go, I'm not going to judge myself and that's it. And then every time you judge yourself, you'll still want to do it because there's no desire hasn't changed in you. Your will hasn't changed. Your will is going to be going, I want to do it, while your mind's going, I don't want to do it. And isn't that going to be even more confusing? Yes. So, so we've got to find why we judge. So what's our purpose for judgment? So why do you judge yourself? Um, because I feel like I need correction. Oh, oh. let's have a look. Judge. No. I don't realise I do it. That's why I just, I'm just learning about judge that I judge myself all the time, just this group. Yeah, I agree. You do. So why do you do it, Laura? What do you get out of it? Remember, everything we do has a reward. What's your reward? Um, okay, I, I I feel like I need to be uh, need to be taught. I need to learn through a bit of pain, or, or I need to learn through pain. I feel I need to be punished. Oh yes, or else I won't learn, and I'll do it again. Yep. So that's a problem. So if I develop an aspiration to no longer judge myself, one of the things I'm going to have to address is the feeling, I'm going to have to feel through the need to be punished. The what? addiction, the desire to pun feel through the, the desire, desire to be punished, to be yeah. Punished. yeah. Now, why would I desire to punish myself? What, what, what's the purpose? What does it give me? There's something it others gives me. Don't, uh, I, get, okay. I do it before others attack me. Exactly. I punish myself... to avoid attack from others. Even though it's completely illogical and I know that That's nobody right. around uh, me is going to attack In this place me. we're completely illogical, aren't we? Yeah. That's all right. You stop judging that. You just go, you don't, you don't <laughs> go like, oh, you're a stupid, silly idiot because you're completely illogical. You don't do that. Okay. Of I course you're a stupid, silly idiot because you're illogical. That's what the facade does. It's all just illogical, <laughs> okay. the whole thing. Crazy it is. So, so my, I, I punish myself to, oh, it should be myself, punish, uh, I'll shorten that to me, to avoid attack of others, right? Now, now what does that tell me is another problem. I have a false belief, uh, evil, evil. Well, no, just before you even get there, what, what does that tell me? I'm avoiding the attack from others. So what does that tell me I'm afraid of? Attack. I am afraid of attack. Now, 
even like you just think about though we won't cover anymore because we don't want to labor the point too much so here we are we've got three identified emotions that you've identified as your motivations for judging yourself you follow me yeah so there's three three things if i just put a whole heap of ink over me no and i all cover it this is all before the addiction the addiction this is right up the top on well it, it, these are addictions oh, obviously okay. these are addictions right okay. you, you you have a urge to do it yeah and the urge to do it is a compulsion and a compulsion is an addiction it feels like who i am I yeah it feels, yeah i know it, it feels like who you are it's not who you are so it's, it's your compulsions yes uh, unfortunately for the majority of people here they believe their compulsions are them right but once you get rid of your compulsions you no longer think that right but it's only after you get rid of them so here we have we have three compulsions three addictions that cause you to desire to judge yourself so that all results in the judgment of self is that not right yes okay so then there might be more i'm not suggesting that's all i'm just saying there's three that we've identified so so here we are we've got the three that we've identified how do we stop our judgment of ourselves it was quite obvious i'm going to have to develop a will to feel each one of those motivations oh. so i go okay I, fe I feel about how much i f have the need to punish in order to like when when i f when i make a mistake yep. the need to punish myself for making mistakes I feel about it. I feel about where that came from, why I want it, what what hole is it covering? What it, what this is an addiction, so it co always covers a hole. What hole is it covering? But I just need to feel it as an addiction and see it as a sin. So you don't see it as a sin. You think it's a good thing. Mm. You think you think, I, and the reason why you think it's a good thing is because your parents did it to you, and now you think it's a good thing, so you do it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. This one here. You do because it's avoidance of this. So this is an addiction to punish yourself to avoid the attack of others. You know you're doing that to avoid attack. So what does that tell you? Every time you're going to get you're afraid of attack, you're going to revert to punishing yourself to avoid the attack. Now is that loving yourself? No. Is that loving them? Is that loving the people who is attacking you? No. No, it's not. It doesn't do anything for them, does it? Aside from giving them more power over you, which is certainly not loving them. So, so, that's, so I'm going to have to feel how terrified I am of attack. That's a fear, mm. driving my justified, unloving behaviour. It's driving my sin towards myself. Yeah. Do you follow me? Mm. So it's driving my sin towards myself to judge myself. So, so if I have those emotions, those, just those three, do I have a compassion for myself? No. No, I don't. So I can't manufacture a compassion for myself unless I release these three emotions. Because to try to manufacture compassion while these emotions exist is like trying to use my willpower to overcome what's really there. I can't do that. What I've got to do is release this so I no longer feel like judging myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So also this, this afraid of attack, I, I feel it is my global terror, but it's right still up the well, top. Well, it's not actually your global terror. Mm. It, it's, it's a part of your global terror, which we'll talk about in a couple of days' time. But, but for most people are afraid of attack because when they were children, they got attacked so many times, whether it be verbally or physically. You know, you were put down so many times, attacked so many times, it, you know, that it, it, in fact, in fact, today it's used as the major method of controlling a child's behaviour. That's the fact. It's the major way of controlling a child's behaviour. And the more people re uh, go away from corporal punishment of a child, the more they revert to this these other very insidious methods of controlling a child which are all very harmful and degrading to the child still and, and sometimes more difficult to release because it's a lot easier to admit that dad belted me every few days for doing something wrong than it is to admit to yourself that somebody manipulated you and played a whole heap of mind games with you to manipulate your behaviour. Do you follow? Yes. So, so, what, so the point is, the way to release the judgement of self, which, which means working towards compassion of self, means that I've got to feel this need I have to feel punished 
in fact, uh, you have a, inside of yourself a feeling that if somebody punishes me, it means they love me. And in fact, your mother tells you that. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I do this because I love you. And a lot of mothers have, and fathers have done that. You know, Dad comes home from work, Mum says, give him a belt because they did the wrong thing. And Dad doesn't really want to do it, but he says, all right, I get out, strap and bang, bang, bang. Um, I'm doing it because I love you. Or the Bible says I have to do it. In as a part, part of, of learning life. as well, a loving way of teaching a child is through this process. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So you start reflecting upon that and feeling about that and feeling how harmful that is. If you feel it and release it, then you'll release your desire to judge yourself. Mm. Once your desire to judge yourself has been released, now when, when you look at your facade, you won't judge it. Makes sense, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank now you. you have some compassion, probably automatically, mm -hmm. for it. And I'll develop some faith in that because that's quite a big process for me. So yes. I'll develop faith in that process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you do anything that's out of harmony with love of self or love of others, the easiest thing to do is write down the motivations you have for doing it. And most of you know what those motivations are. The key is to be honest with yourself, but most of you know what the motivations are. So you write down your motivations, why you're doing it. Now in the case of hurting other people, it's a lot about manipulation, control, punishment of others is all about, you know, trying to manipulate and control other people, blackmail other people, bribe other people into getting what you want from them. If you're doing it to yourself, it's about, you know, punishing yourself, bribing yourself in order to get somebody else to treat you a certain way usually as well same kind of motivation so you can find the motivations the key is once you've found the motivations is to feel them and you're not doing that what you do instead is you just punish yourself for having them so you just go and live in this place I totally live in it yep and punish yourself for having them and the problem with that is that it doesn't get you anywhere no and that's why you haven't got anywhere no because it doesn't get you anywhere doing that it doesn't help you on a lot of levels, actually. There's also some other motivations for judgment of self, and some of them are actually quite uh, manipulative, believe it or not. Like another one is, you know, we can, add, we can add many, as I said, but another one is, when I judge self, others are more kind to me. Unfortunately, that is true <laughs> for most people. Now, now, what that does is it generates a motivation. Okay, how do I make you kind to me? If I attack myself, highly likely you'll feel more compassion for me than if I am loving myself. Yes. So that tells me that I'm addicted to getting love from other people but I'm unwilling to love myself. Well, sympathy is better than attack, like as in, in that place, not in truth. Well, yeah, see, that's what you tell yourself in that yeah. era. But is it really sympathy? Because sympathy has to come from the heart without there being an underlying reason for it coming. And the fact is you've made an underlying reason by judging yourself first. So it's not really sympathy. It's just not attack, I guess. It's, just, it's not attack, but it's not sympathy. <laughs> yeah. You tell yourself it's sympathy, but it's not. See, these are the lies we tell ourselves. It's not sympathy. Mm. True sympathy or compassion comes from the heart without you having to attack yourself for it, without you having to put yourself down for it. True sympathy comes from the heart from an, of another. So if, if sympathy is only coming because you've put yourself down first, then I suggest to you it's not sympathy at all. They're responding. They have a position of power over you and they're responding to the fact that you've given them power. That's all they're responding to. It's actually abusive from God's perspective. Because I, if I want power over you and the only way I get power over you is for you to protect yourself and then I feel more powerful than you and then I give you sympathy... It tells me that I want power, control of you. That's not love. 
Yeah, so we've got to be careful there because we, and, and on the receiving end of that, you are giving away power so that you don't get attacked. Mm. Yeah, now I suggest that anyone you give away power to, if, obviously if they want to take it, they are very, very unloving people. And particularly if they want to take it under the conditions you're offering it in, which is a willingness to harm yourself in order to get to, for them to have some power over you. If they're willing to take that, they're in a very dark condition. So what you're going to do is attract very dark people into your life doing that and very dark spirits. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they'll punish you and do that. They'll give you that feeling while you're giving the power, feeling back. And this is what you do with the spirits around you, Laura. You're giving them power. This is the power you're giving them. You're giving them power constantly, giving away your power to them because you're just afraid of what they'll do to you if you stop. You're better off feeling your fear of stopping and stopping. Mm. You follow? Yeah. But this is why you judge yourself. So, yeah, all emotions need to allow yourself to feel. Release those emotions and you won't judge yourself anymore. You'll be able to have compassion. Mm. So even just developing compassion for oneself, you can see, is a bit of a process. Yeah. yeah? It's not going to be something you go today go, I've got compassion for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel happy now. It's not like that at all. It's like you have to work through a number of different emotions to have compassion for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for yeah. that. Fab? Very helpful. It seems like th this process is intellectual and emotional at the same time, but that one that you're talking about earlier is it's more of an emotional process, isn't it? Yeah, um, your intellect can assist here, but, but you don't need to use it as much. And in fact, what you, you remember what you're working for, towards is your real self, which doesn't need to use intellect at all, but is very clever. Yeah. Um, so many of you have asked me like how I can talk and talk and talk for hours on a subject with all these different things that come out without you know, me having like to have notes about it or whatever. And the way is because when you, once you're connected to your real self, you know the truth of everything. It is a feeling, and and it triggers all your thoughts. It's not it's not it's not the other way around. It's like at the moment for you guys, if you're up here, most of you would have to think about what you're doing, mm. right? I don't have to think about what I'm doing, so it makes it easier. It's actually easier to live like that. You don't have to think about anything, but you actually become more clever because every th every thought you have is in harmony with love. Therefore, it's more logical. Up here, every thought you have is out of harmony with love and very illogical, right? And so, you know, you'll be doing things like Laura's doing, like Laura's doing with judgment. You go, if I judge myself, I'll avoid the attack of others. But there are people who don't love you anyway. So why are you trying to avoid the attack of people who don't love you? Doesn't make much sense to me. Like doing a whole heap of things to pull yourself down in order for people who don't love you now to not love you more. If you think about it from a logical perspective, crazy, right? But, but up here, you're not logical. You're just driven by fears and addictions. You're driven by the holes. You're not, not logical in that place. True logic can only come when, when you've actually gone through a lot of your pain. You'll become very, log very logical people, able to, able to analyse things accurately, consistently. Yeah. It seems like a more real place down there, you know, like be more real well obviously what you're doing is you're taking away more and more of the castle you've constructed and as you do that certainly you become more mm. real but also you become more open to the real the way god designed your soul to operate and the way god designed your soul to operate is by having a feeling first and then thoughts so thoughts are just a subsequent result mm. of your feelings right up here you think you're all about managing feelings, so you've got to think about how to do it. Right? You've got to think, no, I'm not going to do that. Yes, I'm going to do that. What am I going to do here? You've got to think about all that because, firstly, most of your actions are unloving anyway, so if you want to not sin, you've got to think about everything you do then um, because most of your desires are unloving. Once you get rid of unloving desires, then there's no desire to think illogical anymore either. Yeah, so logic is a subsequent result. I had a talk... Uh, um, we might have even had it on the net where some spirits came to us a few years ago it was and we, myself and Mary were just sitting out front in a chair and together and, um, and I think we had a recorder with us and all of a sudden some spirits popped up and they were spirits in the fifth sphere who came to ask me about logic. 
because they notice that I'm a very logical person, but I don't seem to think very much. <laughs> and, they, and they couldn't work it out. So, so that's why they came. And we had a discussion about that. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's on the... It's on the net? Yeah. Okay, so it's on there. Um, good to listen to that because it demonstrates how they were coping and dealing with logic when, when the reality is in union the soul. Logic is an automatic, mm -hmm. automatic quality that you possess. Yeah. Awesome. Up here you're totally illogical. It's like way out there. Way out crazy out there. <laughs> it is in that place, yeah. But getting back to this discussion, you see uh, the importance of it in a way, can't you? Because what we're looking at here is, okay, um, I, I need to have compassion for myself. I don't have it yet. What do I need to do to get it? And you can see that what I need to do to get it is to look at all the reasons why I don't have compassion for myself and start analysing my addictions associated with each one of them. What do I get out of it? What, what does it bring me? In Laura's case, she believed it brought her, like she, f she felt satisfied because she was being punished. Right, so there's an issue. And also she, was, she, she felt it avoided the attack of others by doing it so there's there's a chance work through those things emotionally and now you won't automatically judge yourself but if you don't work through those things emotionally you will continue to judge yourself yeah yeah okay so suzanne just following on from what laura was talking about So just following on from what Laura is talking about. about. Yeah, and I was feeling through like what is the quality of compassion and then you'd been talking about pity and I could see how I could easily fall into pity instead of compassion and I wondered how you feel the difference. Uh, pity is another one of these things that is very negative towards oneself or others. P pity, what pity does is it gets you away from addressing the real reason why you does, do something. That's its motivation. So, so for example, you can, if you pity yourself, you don't have to address why you did it. You can just pity yourself and live in the pity and hopefully people around you will forgive you. Uh, right, yeah. And then once you're forgiven, you, 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 you then no longer engage self-pity, mm. but you have, still haven't addressed the problem. Yeah. So it actually gets you out of having to address the actual problem. Mm. So the motivation of pity is similar to judgment in a way, isn't it? Yes. Because so it's to avoid addressing the actual issue. Yeah. Yeah. Judgment is a bit more insidious because it's got a lot of different problems associated with it. But pity is like, yeah. It's a, well, I've seen many engage it, but, but it's pointless emotion because it never addresses the problem. And also it requires other, it requires, it's an addiction aimed at other people to get a feeling back from them that they've let you off the hook. Mm. Yeah, I, so it's I, a manipulation I, of others. Self pity is a manipulation of others. Yeah, I felt I was doing that in prayer, too. Yeah, so you're trying to mm. manipulate God using the same way you've manipulated others. Mm. And has it worked? No, I no. just felt icky and I just stopped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The key is to look at the motive. Every time, look at the motive. What are you expecting to get from it? So what do you expect to get when, you, when you're self-pitying? You expect to get other people to let you off the hook. Yeah. When you're self-pitying with God, what are you expecting? Some kind of sympathy, get off the you hook. You want him to let you off the hook. Yeah. And is he going to? No. No. Can't. His laws are immutable, unchangeable. Yeah. He's not going to let you off the hook for breaking them. The only way you're going to get any response from God is by entering repentance, and that's not pity. No. Self-pity. Mm. Okay, yep. thank you. Okay, well, we need to stop there, I feel. We need to uh, have our lunch break. Thank you for your questions there, guys, our general questions. <clears throat> so um, we're going to have a half-hour break now, so 2 o'clock, if we come back at 2 o'clock.